Hey guys, it's Emma. I am back today for you guys in order to film another book review. And this one is the last book to a series that I've been reading for a while, and it's one of my one of my very favorite series, in fact. It is the Guardian Herd series, and the last book is Windborn, which I just finished today, if you can see it off the glare of the many lights. It's Windborn, and it is the fourth book and the last book in the Guardian Herd series, and I finished it about a week ago. And I am very sad that it's over. It's over. So this review is going to be a spoiler review. I really don't, I don't think I've learned how to make non-spoilery reviews, if that makes any sense. But this one, as of right now, is going to be a spoiler spoilery review. There we go. Um, so if you don't want to be spoiled for the last book, then I don't recommend watching this video. Three, two, one. Spoiler time, everybody. Okay. The last book, we start off um, right after the third book, Landfalls Cliffhanger, which was when Nightwing came and had taken all of Star's Pegasi, and they like he doesn't know where they are at all. And the only horse, or the only Pegasus that is there is his enemy, Frostfire, who is actually also his uncle, who Heike hates him. So Frostfire and Star aren't necessarily the best of friends at this moment. Basically, they're their only hope of finding the rest of the Pegasi. And it's just basically about them trying to find um, the Pegasi that Nightwing took. They end up finding them in an old abandoned territory that is prone to lightning strikes, storms, huge wolves, dire wolves. And Nightwing basically imprisons 12,000 Pegasi in this gigantic valley, and he's basically a dictator. And he has Star, you know, surrender and um, build this tribute for him because he wants to be admired. He wants the Pegasi that he's controlling to admire him because he's got this sick twisted thing where he just wants a family but he'll do anything to get it. So Star agrees to build the monument or the tribute to Nightwing in order to give his friends who are digging a tunnel up underneath the valley um, in order to free some Pegasi not enough to where Nightwing would be able to see or be able to notice. And then Star's friends would take said amount of Pegasi and move to another continent so that, you know, there would be mm, other Pegasi in the world, basically. So Star agrees to build the tribute in order to give his friends time to build the tunnel and escape. And the tribute is going to take a long time to build because Nightwing says, Yo, you're going to build me a huge tribute made of 10,000 stones that you are not allowed to use your powers in order to build it and you're not allowed to heal yourself either so whatever injuries you get you're gonna stick with they witness how nightwing like how twisted nightwing is with the other pegasi um he's willing to kill off a bunch of walkers which are basically um pegasi that can't fly so it would be you know pegasi that have damaged their wings or just really old pegasi that can't fly and he's willing to kill them in order to do it for the good of the herd. He's willing to steal foals and weanlings away from their mothers, which is problematic. <laughs> In all honesty, it's the type of children's book where it's like you think, wow. Like you can, the dialogue is G-rated, I guess, but then the content is low-key PG-13 rated. Because I remember in the first book we saw a Pegasus basically burned to death. Um, in this book, there are many battle scenes where, for example, in one battle, um, all the Pegasi fall to the ground and they're laying in something along the lines of twisted heaps of broken wings. And it's, it's very descriptive and it's very, it's graphic to a point where you start to wonder 
whether or not this should be a children's book. It's kind of like Black Beauty and Animal Farm. It was very good. It did fall a little subpar compared to the first, second, and third book. I don't think it really lived up to the third book's expectations because the third book, Landfall, it um, ended on a cliffhanger. And, you know, then we had to wait a year for Windborn to come out. I don't really know what I was expecting from it, but I definitely was expecting a little bit more than this. Just because I feel like the plot went a little flat. It felt like... Um, Jennifer Lynn Alvarez was just trying to fill in for a page quota. And most of the time throughout this book, it's Star and Frostfire just going around the continent and finding out that the herd isn't here. So they go to another place, they find out that the herd isn't there. They go to another place, they find out the herd isn't there. It's just a bunch of hide and seek. But it felt like most of that part where Frostfire and Star are just looking for the herd, it felt like that could have been taken out and you, Jennifer Lynn Alvarez could have said, Fr Frostfire and Star looked all across the continent for months or something along those lines. And I feel like it would have, the story would have been the exact same, just less thick. But I mean, other than that, the story was pretty good, just, like I said before, the plot fell a little flat and it felt like some things could have been taken out. But, I mean, overall, it wasn't really an amazing book, but it also wasn't a terrible book at the same time. It was just like, alright, this is the end of the series. A satisfying ending. Good. Not too influential, but not too boring at the same time. There were some parts in here, though, that I really either really stuck with me or that I really enjoyed. For example, the part where um, Dewberry is basically chastising Morning Leaf, I thought that part was really needed because in all honesty, don't get me wrong, Morning Leaf is one of my favorite characters. I felt like Morning Leaf was very impulsive when it came to Star, like she would do anything to protect this, like, she would do anything to protect him. And it honestly was pretty reckless. There's a line between selfless and reckless, and she was flirting with it. Morning Leaf was flirting with it full time. And for an example, it's the chastising that Dewberry gives her on page 179 and 180. Um, Dewberry stamped her hoof. Star left the den without telling you for a reason, Morning Leaf. Did you consider that? He didn't want you to stop or follow him. Why? asked Morning Leaf, trying to catch her breath. Because of stuff like this, said Dewberry, when it comes to Star, you don't think about anyone else or yourself. You take too many chances. Morning Leaf tossed back her mane. What are you talking about? I'm talking about everything you've done, rasped Dewberry. Baiting armies, flying in jet streams, galloping through a wolf-infested forest by yourself. Do you expect Star to drop everything and save you? Of course not, said Morning Leaf, tears forming in her eyes. Dewberry continued. Did you ever stop to think that you're putting Star in danger too? He can't focus on Nightwing if he's got to run after you and save your life. It's why he left you behind. He's not the dud fool you grew up with, Morning Leaf. He can take care of himself. At that moment, I thought, wow, Dewberry literally just handed Morning Leaf's ass right to her. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's harsh, but it's true. Because every single time Morning Leaf would try to save Star, she would end up putting herself in danger. I felt like Morning Leaf was a tryhard a lot of a lot of the time. But she was a smart tryhard. And even after this um scold from Dewberry, she like takes it into, takes it into consideration and she really molds herself to fix it. It's character development. And that's what I live for. Even though it had to come in the last book of the series, like really? Like she didn't fix her recklessness until the very last book when it really mattered. Chapter 27, The Newborns. The Newborns is very, very dramatic because this is the chapter where Petal Cloud has Nightwing's two foals. So Petal Cloud gives birth to twins, a filly and a colt, and the colt is born dead. And, you know, Nightwing is completely devastated by this because, you know, that's that's what he really wanted. Like, 
evilness aside, murderousness aside, insanity aside, Nightwing really just wanted a family. He really just wanted a herd of his own because he never had that. He really didn't have anybody that loved him. I'm not saying that Petal Cloud really loved him because the girl's trifling. With the cult born dead, you know, Nightwing is grieving. And Frostfire, which, who is, like I said, Petal Cloud's son, he's had a cult. Star Frost. Oof. When Petal Cloud marched out of the shade and confronted Nightwing, the two argued, and Petal Cloud pointed across the valley at her grandson, Starfrost. Frostfire pinned Larkson to the grass to protect her while Nightwing picked up their perfect white colt in his wings. When Nightwing reached Petal Cloud, he laid the colt at her feet, and then he walked away, returning to his son who had died. Petal Cloud nuzzled her new colt, Starfrost, and then lifted her head, gazing at Frostfire, her eyes hard and black, but pleased. She shrugged her violet wings, almost as if an apology, then turned and took her two foals, her two foals beneath the sycamore tree to rest. And the fact that Petal Cloud is Frostfire's mother, she took her grandson basically as a replacement for her son. That's awful. And the fact that like it says that she looks at Frostfire and her eyes are still hard and black and like unappealing, but she looks at him as if like, yeah, I just took your full. What are you gonna do about it? Like, how unmotherly is that? You really saw the emphasis on familial ties, like, leading off of that. If you look at pack animals, or just animals with a pack mentality, you can see how they deteriorate, deteriorate almost when they're by themselves. It's like they need that emotional attachment to another one of their kind. And that's what you see a lot in this book, especially with Star and Frostfire. Frostfire rejects Star many times, and even in the end, Frostfire does not look at Star as his family at all. And you really saw how that took an impact on Star. You felt how abandoning that really was, because it's like, Star has really been alone. Like, throughout the entire series, Star has been alone. It ends with an odd um, closing, because... There was high key this love triangle between Morningleaf, Star, and Brackentail. And all of a sudden, you just see this explosion of chemistry between Morningleaf and Brackentail. And Star gets dismissed as a friend. I felt more chemistry between her and Star more. But then the four, but then this book rolled around and Star was like, yo, I gotta peace out. I gotta go fight something. I gotta go fight and kill Nightwing in order to save y'all. So, Morning Leaf, you need to keep your reckless ass in the den so that, you know, you don't die again and I have to save you. It was only after that that Morning Leaf actually started reciprocating feelings toward Brackentail. I don't know if the author meant for that to happen or if it was just a matter of the chemistry being so hurriedly added because that's what it felt like. It felt like Morning Leaf's reciprocated chemistry towards Brackentail just came out of nowhere because Star was gone. That's immediately what it felt like. And it made me think, I don't think she likes Brackentail. Star was immortal, right? He had accepted that. And he thought, Morning Leaf's gonna grow old and die. We're not gonna be friends forever. We're not gonna be anything forever. You know, he had that whole mindset and that was what kind of made him let Morning Leaf go. But then at the very end, when he defeated Nightwing, his powers went away. His immortality went away. But Morning Leaf had already gone for Brackentail because she thought, oh, stars left. I gotta feel my feelings somewhere. Yo, Brackentail, there you are. Come over here, boy. That was basically her thing. And it made me feel bad for Star because your boy comes back. He's wounded. He can't heal himself. He's got to live life as a normal Pegasi, which is what he's always wanted. But at the same time, it's like, now he doesn't have anything. Star basically got friend zoned. On page 336, Star nickered with relief because he thought she'd be disappointed. I don't think I'll be going anywhere for a while. He stared at his broken leg, which throbbed, making him feel sick. And at the burns on his black hide that would leave scars, it would take time to heal. Well, you know what this means, don't you? She asked. What? 
Now we can be best friends forever, because he was mortal now and he would one day die. Now he probably will be alone. Even though he got what he wished for. Why? Bumblewind's dead. Hazelwind and Echo Frost are gone with the other Pegasi to the other continent. Silver Lake is dead. We don't know where Shade Pebble went. Where did Shade Pebble go? Justice for Shade Pebble 2K18, please. And then Morning Leaf went with Brackentail. And now Star really doesn't have anybody. Other than like two friends that are gonna be like fawning over each other because now they're a couple. Like, talk about third wheeling. One thing I did really like was that for every chapter heading, there is an illustration of a Pegasus. And if you look at the descriptions for each Pegasi or each Pegasus, you can, um, you can tell which horse is which, which is really cool. Again, it wasn't the best book, but it wasn't the worst book ever. It was a decent ending to a series. That's what it was. I would say get this book just to like finish it, just to finish it off, just so you can get closure. Because even though it was an odd ending, it was still an ending. And I felt like it was a good enough ending to end the story. That wasn't a good review, but I felt like I needed to get the little bitty points that I had out just so that, you know, I can emphasize what points really stood out to me. It's a good ending to a pretty good segment of my childhood. So, like I said, if you want to finish the series, which I definitely recommend, buy the book, The Guardian Herd Windborn by Jennifer Lynn Alvarez. But yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this review. I will see you guys next time. I hope you guys have a good day slash night slash dawn, slash twilight, slash dusk, slash whatever time of the day you're watching this video. You do you, man. You do you.